Hello, and welcome to the first of a long series of videos designed to accompany the Paideia web app, an application for learning Biblical Greek. My name is Ian Scott, and I'm the creator of Paideia. And in this video, I'd like to convince you that you can learn Biblical Greek. I'll also introduce you to how Paideia works as a program, and what activities you'll be doing over the next few weeks. A lot of people ask, why should we learn Greek in the first place anyway? For Christians, learning Biblical Greek is important because it helps us to hear Scripture clearly. A lot of us don't think about the fact that translations of the Bible aren't themselves inspired. Christians have never believed that a particular translation uh, was inspired by God the same way the original books were. And so every English translation is also an interpretation. In a sense, it's like you're reading a commentary on what the original text meant. This is good enough for a lot of purposes, but it's like God's voice to us through Scripture is muffled. Learning Greek also helps us to understand the differences we see between different translations. And rather than depending on the translators' opinions, we can begin to evaluate different translations and decide which one we think is more true to the original text. It also helps us to understand commentaries. A lot of the time, more in-depth commentaries will discuss aspects of the Greek language, and if we don't understand some Greek ourselves, we find it very hard to follow those discussions in the commentaries. Even if you just learn something about Greek so that you can understand some of the terms like aorist and participle, it's not the same as actually understanding how the language works. And finally, we learn Greek as Christians so that we can meditate in a fresh way on God's Word. Learning Greek isn't just an academic exercise. Just like we don't read English translations strictly for study, we also read English translations so that we can reflect and meditate on God's Word. In the same way, once we learn Greek, we can begin to actually read parts of the Greek New Testament and meditate on that Greek text. It forces us to slow down because it takes more time for us to read, and so it helps us to notice every word, every detail of the text as we reflect on it and let God speak to us. The second question people often ask is, all right, it may be good for us to learn Greek, but can I? My answer is, yes, you can. You're not too old. You're not too young. You're not too bad at languages. You don't need a great memory. Anyone can learn Biblical Greek. What does it take? It takes consistency. It takes doing the activities over and over again on a daily basis over a long time. And so it also takes patience. And you need to be realistic. You're not going to learn how to just sit down and open up your Biblical Greek uh, New Testament and read it like you read the newspaper in one term. You're not going to learn Greek uh, that well even in two or three terms. But over three terms or four terms of studying New Testament Greek, you can get to the point where you can read a lot of uh, verses in the New Testament without the help of a, a dictionary. And with the help of a dictionary, you can read the majority of passages in the New Testament. But we do need to be realistic. That kind of learning will take a different amount of time for different people. Why do people find Greek so hard then? Well, in North America, many of us have never learned another language. And so we've built it up in our minds into an impossible task. We may have taken French or Spanish at school, but let's face it, for a lot of us, that wasn't very effective. And our French or Spanish lessons may have just convinced us that we can't learn another language. Well, that wasn't because it's impossible for us. It's because the methods that were being used and the time that we were putting into it just wasn't working for us. 
standard classroom methods don't suit everyone. They require a high degree of discipline and motivation. And let's face it, most of us these days in our busy lives aren't that disciplined or motivated. Standard classroom methods require that we already know how to memorize things. We're just given lists of words and told, learn this. And learning is separated from the regular use of what we're learning. Paideia works differently. Paideia is designed to meet the needs of a broader range of students. It provides a fun, low-intensity environment. That means there are no tests or quizzes. You never have to worry about cramming for an exam. Your mistakes aren't penalized. You don't get marked down for getting things wrong. If you get something wrong, you'll go more slowly, but that's just because the program is recognizing that if you get something wrong, you need to practice it more until you get it right. And so students in Paideia can move at their own pace. And finally, the town setting for many of us makes the interactions more interesting. It's a little bit like we're actually speaking with people. Paideia simplifies language learning. It's a one-stop solution. You don't have to make flashcards. You don't need to memorize complex paradigms, make big charts. You just need one place to go, and that is the Paideia program. And the program figures out what you need to do each day. This fits the way we like to learn languages, fits the way our brains work. We get regular short interactions instead of occasional cram sessions. And those regular short interactions are the way our brain actually absorbs languages the best. We also use the language in a sort of conversational setting as we're interacting with the characters in Paideia. And we get immediate feedback. We don't have to fill out assignments and then wait until our professor marks them. You get the opportunity to correct your mistakes right away. So as soon as you give a wrong answer, once you receive the immediate feedback, you have the opportunity to do that exercise over again so that you can get it right. So how does this actually work? Well, once you've created an account on Paideia and logged in, each day you go to the map. And the map link is in the top uh, bar, the navigation bar on your browser window. You click on one of the hotspots, one of the buildings uh, that highlights with a, a label when you move your mouse cursor over it. And when you click on that hotspot, you visit a location, one of the buildings in the town. You can then talk by typing with the townspeople that you meet there. All you have to do is follow the townspeople's instructions, and that's it. All that there is to Paideia is clicking on the map, and interacting with the people uh, following their prompts. The townspeople will then tell you when it's time to start learning some new aspects of Greek, working on new badges. Uh, they'll tell you when it's time to come and view some more slide sets or th these videos. They'll tell you when to call it quits for the day. Although even if your uh, character tells you that you've done enough, you can always keep going. There's no cutoff for the day. And that's it. Your progress through Paideia is measured in badges, sets, and levels. And it's important to understand these terms. Each part of the Greek language is connected to a badge. And with each badge, you progress through one of four levels of mastery with that badge. So for a particular uh, ba badge like uh, Noun Basics, you start as a beginner with that badge. Then as you do practice with uh, exercises that have to do with noun basics, the computer recognizes your progress and you're promoted to apprentice level, level two, with that noun basics badge. Further along, as you learn more, you're promoted again to level three, journeyman, and eventually level four, master. Now, you'll be working on a number of different badges, different parts of the Greek language uh, at the same time, but each badge levels up independently because the program recognizes that while you might be doing really well with one aspect of the language, maybe you're still struggling with another one. 
your badges are gathered into sets and each set of badges is introduced to together these are a cluster of aspects of the language and a cluster of vocabulary words that you'll start learning together and even though you progress uh, in badge levels independently in each badge you won't be introduced to the next set of badges until you progress to a certain level in all of the badges in your first set. So in the picture here you can see that uh, we have badge set uh, or badge one uh, in green is progressing well uh, and we're making good progress there but badge two which is part of the same badge set one the second badge in that set we're still struggling with uh, and badge three is somewhere in the middle well moving on to the next badge set requires that all of the badges in your current set have reached the apprentice level level two so here we see badge set one and all three of those badges have progressed beyond uh, level one beyond the beginner level in badge one we've got the master level in badge two, two we've got the uh, uh, apprentice level badge three we've got the journeyman level so uh, we're making good progress on all three of those badges in set one even though uh, our actual level of learning in each badge varies but because we've prog uh, progressed in all three of those badges to at least level two the program recognizes that we're ready to start learning more and so we're introduced to badge set two and at the beginning each of those badges is at the beginner level so you can see the red dotted line there shows uh, the the cutoff uh, where once we get all of the badges in badge set two up to that red line to to the uh, uh, apprentice level or level two then we'll have a further badge set set three introduced and there it is that's how we progress uh, through the material in Paideia uh, advancing to apprentice level in a badge advancing to that level two uh, takes a couple of things it, it it requires that we demonstrate a good initial mastery of each of those parts of Greek how is that measury masters Ma uh, mastery measured sorry well there are two independent ways first of all if you go for a full day 24 hours uh, without making any mistakes on that badge then you'll be promoted to uh, apprentice level level two with that badge um, now that doesn't happen if you don't make any mistakes because you don't do any exercises <laughs> but if you're doing exercises on paideia that day and you do a good number of exercises and the whole 24 hours of exercises passes without making any mistakes on a badge then you'll be promoted to the next uh, level in that badge the other way is uh, even if you're making a few mistakes if 70 percent or seven out of ten of your responses uh, to exercises that relate to that batch if seven out of ten of them are right over a period of a week so it's averaged over seven days uh, if you get seven out of ten right over seven days then you'll also be promoted to level two or apprentice level even though you're still making a few mistakes because let's face it sometimes we make typos sometimes we we're just not perfect if you want some more inspiration and encouragement about uh, learning Greek you can look uh, in the textbook by uh, Bill Mounts basics of biblical Greek uh, and the whole chapter one is focused on strategies and encouragement for learning biblical Greek now notice that some of Mounts's advice isn't really uh, directly applicable when you're learning with Paideia because we don't have to do some of the independent work that uh, regular classroom courses involve uh, but if you want some extra encouragement and you want some more tips you want to get a sense of how classroom learners uh, would normally work 
that chapter one in Mounts's Basics of Biblical Greek is a good place to go. Now, if you really, really want to use some flashcards separately from the Paideia program, I recommend the free flashcard program called Anki. It uses a similar spaced repetition approach to memorization, uh, memorization uh, similar approach to the one used by this app. Uh, it has free clients for any operating system, so you can download it for Windows, for uh, Mac, uh, iOS, Android, and even Linux, which is what I happen to use. Uh, Anki has a free cloud syncing service, so all of your decks and progress can be synced between your laptop and your cell phone and your tablet. And there's also a free web interface for studying decks in a web browser. The uh, iPhone and iPad and Android apps uh, do cost a little bit of money, uh, and that money helps to fund the, the uh, free clients that are available for the other platforms, as well as uh, helping to fund the cloud syncing service. Um, you can download that program at ankysrs.net, and you can see the link there. And if you do use Anki, consider supporting it. Um, this is a, a labor of love by its developer. Uh, it was begun as a free open source project and continues to be that, even though there's a cost for the uh, iOS uh, app. Um, so consider donating to the developer to help him continue uh, developing and expanding and maintaining the program. You can either uh, just make a direct donation, or you can support the app by buying one of those paid mobile uh, clients. No, I'm not connected with the developer at all, but I do know what goes into developing free software, and it's a huge amount of work. So uh, if you like Anki and you use it, consider supporting it.